Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be featuring the Barnuminium exterior framing with Dave. This gives a good cutaway view without the soffit on it so you see what we got to start with when we get ready to frame this into the garage. So there's a lot going on with this into the garage. There's the window here at the end. There's the two garage doors, garage door openers. All this has got to fit in and not get in the way of each other. You know, you don't want your garage door showing through your window and that sort of thing. So um, it took a little bit to get all this worked out, but we're ready to get it framed up now and everything should work out just fine. The garage door company was good enough to come out a couple times to uh, check and double check everything. They actually laid everything out on their shop floor, uh, gave me all the measurements I needed, and everything was pretty tight. We only had uh, about two inches uh, clearance between where the top of the garage door rails needed to go and where the windows started. Uh, but it all worked out good. We had to add a couple nailers right at the last minute while they were installing But other than that we had it all framed up just the way they needed it As you can see there my lift has got an incontinence problem so we've got a couple diapers wrapped around uh, where we're dripping a little oil out of the extending cylinder when you're working with older equipment um, a little leak out of a cylinder or a hose that's going bad or a switch that doesn't work quite right you're always kind of fighting that um, most of our equipment's really in pretty good shape but you do get that occasional um, packing seal that's leaking or or a hose that's starting to go. Um, so you just gotta deal with it as you go. Kind of putting the finishing touches on the in and out there so that our siding lines up with our uh, F channel there at our soffit so that it all slides up in there and has enough room but not too much that it all shows. As you see, we're getting ready to start the framing on the west end of the building there. We've already kind of got the window uh, roughed in a little bit, but we're going to lower that. We decided it was going to be too high above the floor for what we wanted. So uh, right now I'm just going to get this moved around and get it lowered down about a foot and a half. So uh, it'll take me a little bit to do that. So I need to get that done. Daphne's out of town watching the grandson for a couple of weeks, and so I'm just trying to do what I can do working by myself. The window configuration is the same on both ends of the building. With the exception, we lowered this one so both windows fit below that lower truss strut where we had to straddle that between the windows on the other end because they were up higher because of the garage doors. And that's kind of what led me to putting this one up higher in the beginning was I was aiming for that same thing. So I actually had to drop this end about two, two feet, 30 inches, I guess it was, to uh, get that smaller upper window below that strut. 
one thing I probably didn't mention was we ordered these windows about a month after we ordered the barn. So um, it was really kind of an educated guess as to how they were going to fit. We knew that we were going to have some stuff to work around, but we, we felt that we had enough room to do it. I still got a couple pieces of framing missing even after the windows installed so I've got to catch that up yet and uh, but for the most part that part of the framing's done. So what we've got here is our, our sill plate. We've got sill sealer down through it. <coughs> I've got uh, um, 3 8 by 4 inch wedge wedge bolts down in the concrete and now right here at this connection I'm going to go in and run a couple of screws into the post kind of help secure that I'll get my little jack stud in here go through and make it all make sure it all Repeat the same thing on the other end. So then we lay our horizontal in there. And I like to have them a little tight. Seems like this wood was a little, a little green. So if you have any kind of a gap, you're going to have more later. Now. What we have here is almost a 12, it's 11 foot 4 inches, so 136 inches. So if you take that 136 and pull out your trusty calculator, about 45 inches. So what we're going to do is we're going to put two supports in here at about 45 inches on center. I usually do is get them in here close by eye and then depending on what the wood looks like and where the knots are and I know everybody thinks that framing things up fast is good, but if you can't do it fast and do it well, then slow down. Because all these little bumps of these studs not being where you want them, um, not being
protruding a little bit to the inside or outside is going to make it tougher on you when it comes to doing your finish work. So it's worthwhile to take a minute and, and do it right and not have to fight it later when you're going to put drywall on or um, for most of us that aren't aren't professionals and I figure a lot of us are not professionals um, you need to make it as easy on yourself as possible and I had some professional framers come in and do a house for me a few years ago and pile of materials on the ground Monday evening and the whole house was framed and sheeted um, in three days by Wednesday well by Wednesday night it was it was framed and sheeted and uh, it wasn't it wasn't a large house maybe 20 100 2200 square feet but it was plenty and um, I walked it and looked it over pretty close and they've done a really nice job uh, everything was where it should be and um, everywhere that a drywall would want to have would want to have something to go off of he would and uh, you know you just don't want to make it hard on the next guy coming along but let's look here I centered those at 45 so the the space between is 44 and a half on this one and it's 44 and a quarter on that one and it's 44 and a quarter on that one and when I said they were about 40 40 uh, five inches apart it was some change too and I just kind of rounded it off so anyway now I'm gonna get a level I'm gonna level these up and I'm gonna attach them from here and then we're just gonna repeat the same process over and over again um, there's a lot of reasons for people to say how hey, you don't need to do this you don't need to do that or you need to do more even um, for the type of building this is I think this is what makes me feel comfortable and what I think is right and um, I've looked at all sorts of building codes and some of them make sense and some of them don't and I've seen some that don't work and uh, and some that aren't practical and some leave way too much loophole um, in theory I've seen a lot of buildings around here that don't have the jack stud on each end I like it because uh, it helps support this if I were to hit this with something I'm not worried about breaking those screws out on the end and and virtually scrapping this board now if you look at the whole building it costs me a lot um, it probably cost me you know 500 bucks and extra lumber maybe a little more um, to do this but a lot of it is boards that I had that I wouldn't have used anywhere else because maybe they had a little bit of a, a twist in them or a crook and so a lot of these are, are, are drops off of longer cuts um, so I just think it's a good way to do it uh, I've seen other people do it uh, I think I think this is the way to go but anyway I'll get a level I'll get these leveled up and get them attached and we'll do the next one So you kind of get the ideas and you might have seen that there's a couple of knots missing out of this wood um, and I don't do the fact that we're kind of overbuilding I don't worry too much about that I've got a support here I've got more than two before left um, around that knot there's not a whole lot of anything that could be on it 
I mean, uh, it's just not even a factor. So when you're buying lumber, it's real easy to get caught up on, oh, this has got a little bark on it or this has got a knot. Um, you just want to make sure you have enough nailing surface and that the board isn't compromised with a bunch of spike knots that that could break in the future so um, you know they call this number twos and um, I think that over the years the, the grading system's gotten a little laxed um, it's kind of hard to find any information on that um, everything's geared towards how to make the mill money you know teaching you how to grade lumber to uh, increase profits as much as possible rather than what really a number two should look like. But anyway, um, enough about lumber. Lumber was crappy in the 60s, it was crappy in the 70s, it was crappy in the 80s, crappy in the 90s, still crappy today. If you talk to anybody that does work with wood, they'll go, man, you just can't get any good lumber today. And I've heard that my whole life. So, um, apparently it's never really been all that fantastic um, people just reminisce about the good old days sometimes so anyway um, you can kind of see what i'm doing here i'm going to continue this on up and then uh, when i get to that part i'll show you how we're going to deal with the the pitch of the roof so anyway we'll be we'll be back in a minute So right here I've, I've run out of room so I, I cut this jack stud down here to match the angle and be able to fit a plate on top of it when the time comes and I'm going to take this one and I'm going to stand it here I'm going to put a level on it now you can do all sorts of measurements if you want to but a lot of times just holding it up there getting a plumb making a mark that'll get you there so I'm going to cut that and then once we get this we get this up here we're going to put a, uh, a horizontal between there and here and that should uh, should tie that in and then eventually we'll be able to put the top plate right on top of it so it's a little it's a little backwards sometimes but that's that's the way it is okay so we're almost plumb there and so we're gonna we're gonna take this back we're gonna cut one and three quarter inches off here to give us room to get our top plate in there so get that done get this tightened in there so I'll kind of show you so we put this in here and tighten that down and then we'll slide a plate in right here and it'll go on down to that bottom so that's the approach so let's get this screwed in normally on these boards I'll put anywhere from two to three screws in them depends on if they've got a twist in them if I'm worried about them staying put and I landed right in the screw one below it so that's no good so I'm gonna put one in from the side
hitting the screw over there too. Let's pick another hole. Good enough for now. Uh, a little bit skewed. Tap it around here a little bit. I think it'll be all right. And uh, see if we can get everything to cooperate here for a minute. We're okay until the breeze picks up. Well, I'm back and pitching in, helping out with this framing work, and there's still a lot more to go, especially when we move towards framing up the interior. But we're whittling away at it little by little. We'll get this. As always, thanks for following along. We really do enjoy getting your comments and your feedback. So until next time, have a good day.